Pitcairn is a beautiful little island in the South Pacific, located halfway between New Zealand and Chile. The most remote and smallest republic in the world with only a population of 45. In October 2018, we were called by the New Zealand to go to Pitcairn Island to pastor the small church and follow up the revival meetings held by Pastor Jean-Noël Adeline in April of 2018. As a result, more people came to church and a number of them were baptized. The island is similar to most societies today, having both believers and non-believers. As time permitted, we had Bible studies on Monday and Thursday evenings, and then on Tuesday nights, we had prayer meeting with the church members. We also both taught a Sabbath school class on Sabbath morning. And Ruby played the keyboard when Melba was not available. Out of the 50 people on the island at that time, from 15 to 25 attended the church every Sabbath. Usually some of the government people attended and sometimes tourists who were on the island for the weekend would also choose to come to church. And this was times challenging for our preaching, not knowing who might come to hear the sermon. I did use PowerPoint to make it audio-visual for the people. But in my ministry, I always shared the gospel first with people, teaching them how to have the assurance of eternal life, which is found in Jesus Christ. And then I, taught, I teach about the Holy Spirit and how to be filled with the Spirit every day by just simply asking Him. I also uh, teach them how to be victorious in the spiritual battle we are in, and also how to pray claiming God's promises. I trust that my messages also reach the non-believers on Pitcairn. Sometimes we would have potlucks on Sabbath in the town square next to the church. We also would visit the elderly people on the island who couldn't make it to church. One was Brother Len Brown, 93 years old, who would always sing along with John when he sang, Jesus Loves Me. And even as he was dying, <clears throat> he was calmed as John sang this song to him. We tried to simply live among the people and love them while going about our daily work in the garden and in our home. Sometimes we would hear the bell ringing five times and we learned quickly that that was the signal to go down to Bounty Bay and welcome the tourists to the island or to bid them farewell. Several islanders pushed and shoved the long boats into the water, and I helped do some of that shoving. And off they would go, sometimes in very stormy weather. The quad bike traffic was heavy, picking up the tourists to take them to their B&B &B for the weekend. So we would interact with the tourists, and it seemed that God would lead us to someone to whom we could witness. One Sabbath morning, K, our police officer, called and asked if I would like to pray for Alex Kostich, a world-class swimmer who had come to visit the island. He was the first person to swim around the island, that's why he came, and I offered a prayer for his protection. After my prayer, he thanked me for praying for him and promised to come listen to my sermon if he got back in time. And would you know it, he got back in time and we welcomed him to our service. We also uh, witnessed to a Zwingli church pastor from Switzerland to whom we gave a great controversy. We told her that she could read about Zwingli in the book. As we left the ship in December, we had a chance to share even more with her. We're still in touch with Monique, a lady from Australia whom we met and who eagerly read Steps to Christ, and now she has read The Great Controversy. And we would have a great time when some French tourists came, and we could communicate with them in French, as we had spoken French for many years in Africa. That was fun, wasn't it? Yes, and near Adamstown, we enjoyed our mission house with a large garden and plenty of coconut and banana trees, and 
the front lawn opens up to a beautiful view of the sea where we could watch the ships come and also see whales uh, at certain times of year. The view from the Mission House is so beautiful. It was a privilege to go out to the bench, which we first couldn't get to, but John cleared away most of the brush. And then we could go there and we could sit and pray or watch the waves or the clouds or the birds. Well, we had plenty of time, didn't we, over there? Oh, we were kept very busy. <laughs> well, were there challenges? I think we oh, both yes. experienced challenges. Yes. Uh, I think your challenge was mosquitoes. Yes. But once we found the bug zapper in our house and dealt with the old bathtubs of rainwater in the front of the house, I did get bitten so much. And so she was scratching less. <laughs> well, I began to clear the land for a garden with a hoe, and, but I was challenged with these six foot tall bunches of grass and weeds and wild bean vines and bushes all where the garden was supposed to be. And Steve Christian and Jay Warden, Warren uh, they saw how hard I was working, and so they came with their backhoe, or digger as they would call it, and cleared and cultivated a garden plot, a nice big place to plant a garden. And so before long, I had veggies growing, such as beans and tomatoes and corn and cucumbers, carrots, peppers, and gobs of cabbage, enough to even share with the rest of the islanders. But the challenge then was to just keep the garden watered and to keep it clear of oxalis weeds, which were always cropping up in, our, in, the, in the soil. We were glad to share some of our produce with one of the new doctors who came. And who did not have our own garden. Yes. We also enjoyed the fruit of the island. Oh, how delicious it was, are the bananas, three kinds of bananas in abundance, enough to dry or to make ice cream. And grapefruit and mulberries and guavas and lemons and oranges and avocados. It was really a delight for eating fruit. At times it was very hot and humid for people our age because we, we were retired. <laughs> but the mission graciously supplied us a dehumidifier. Mm -hmm. humidifier. And Fortunately, I was told before we got there to order supplies three months ahead of time. So I ordered in December and I ordered flour and potatoes and other goods and they actually came with us on the ship in, in March. And I was fortunate enough to have two stoves in the kitchen, <clears throat> one gas and one electric. So if we didn't have electricity, I could still cook. Mm -hmm. And with plenty of flour, I was able to bake enough bread to share bread and muffins with others on the island. And her bread is the best. <clears throat> and after we were there a while, I found that I could buy most of our basic needs at the store. But if we needed anything special, we could order it. Well, that store, by the way, it was a, really an old store and needed upgrading or needed to be just torn completely down, which they did, and I helped them do it. And so they built a new store right next to it. The Islanders are very proud of this new addition, which they have finished since we left. And uh, this store provides ample room for not only uh, the store, but there's a post office and there's a treasurer's office and also a hardware store. We were blessed to have Governor Laura Clark come to the island and we took her down to the tide pools below our house and we had a good visit. She told us that our presence there on the island was very important and that encouraged us. As tourists came to the island, we took the opportunity to witness to them. But we were a bit shamed because uh, they saw our church that was needed a paint job. And so uh, since our church members were so busy with their jobs, we decided to uh, do the good deed and give the church a new facelift. So we found some green paint and some red paint at the mission house and with the help of our school teacher uh, the church got a new fresh look. 
We also posted a, on a small bulletin board at the entrance a short history of how Adventism came to Pitcairn Island so that tourists could learn a little more about our history there. By the end of our 10-month stay, we knew all the islanders and the government people on a first-name basis, and we still pray for all of them, and we're happy to hear that the church members have been able to get good internet preaching when we were unable to return because of the COVID. And so to close, we would like you to hear the church members singing their favorite hymn and the sweet by and by. And this is a hymn which they sing on Anzac Day and also to the tourists at times they go out to the ship and sing this hymn to them. And sometimes it brings the tourists to tears. And as we hear them singing this hymn, we pray that they will meet, that we will meet all of them on that beautiful shore. And we hope to meet all of you too. So may God bless you in your meeting and as you listen to this song. We shall meet all that beauty.